All right, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the row factory in Python SQLite, what it does, describe our own row factory, and yeah, that's basically all we're going to do on this video. If you don't know what a row factory is, it's just a way of describing how you want the data represented from a select statement in SQLite. And in the documentation, they say a row factory controls how a row fetched from this cursor is represented. If none, a row is represented as a tuple, which we saw in the last video when we talked about the fetch all and the fetch many and the fetch one methods of that cursor. And by the way, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. That way you don't miss any videos in the future that you might find useful. And if you want to go back through all of the other SQLite videos, they will all be in a playlist. And so if we go back and we look at the code, I started a function up here. And this function is going to describe our row factory. And so similarly to yesterday, we're going to start by describing the variable fields, which the variable fields is going to be a list comprehension of all of the columns in a row, and more specifically, the column names. And if you remember, we did that by getting the first index of the cursor dot description, or I guess I should say index zero. So if we do x index zero for x in cursor dot description, that will give us all of the column names from that returned row or the SQL query. By the way, the function that we're describing is going to take two parameters. One is the cursor, and the next is going to be the row that is returned from the SQL query. And then lastly, we're going to return a key and a value for key and value of, and we're going to use the zip function, which by the way, if you don't know what the zip function is, it takes two tuples and combines each index's value together. So here, it's going to combine John and Jenny, Charles and Christy, and Mike and Monica. Just to show you what that looks like, let's hit try it yourself here and run. Here we have a tuple of tuples. The first tuple is John and Jenny combined, Charles and Christy, Mike and Monica. So we're going to zip fields, which is going to be our keys, so the column name. And the second is going to be whatever the row is giving us. And this isn't of, this is in. There we go. And so now that we've described our row factory here, and what this is just going to do, it's going to create a dictionary of the keys being the fields or the column names, and the values being the values of the database row. We can set that in the connection dot row factory. And that's just going to be equal to, and it's going to point to the function dict factory. So now if we clear this down below and we go ahead and run this, watch what happens. Wow, I guess we'd have to, <laughs> I guess we have to print this first, right? Uh, if I could type print result, let's try this again. Let's make this a little larger. So instead of a list of tuples, we now have a list of dictionary objects where the key is the column name and the value is the row value from the database. And instead of fetch all, let's just fetch one. Oops, fetch one. And then let's print the result manufacture. And I spelled manufacture wrong, but that's okay. Pretend it's right. This is going to give us Audi because the first row is this first item here. And then when our key is manufacturer, our value is Audi from the database. And I really prefer this row factory over the default tuple that they give us because this makes more sense to read, right? We're not just seeing all the values and wondering, okay, what are these values corresponding to? What columns are they corresponding to? So this is how you can create a dictionary object from the select statement and SQLite in Python. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next video and take care.